All right, today we're going to be doing Jerry. So if you're taking the EJPT, I highly recommend that you do this lab. Um, we will go through the walkthrough here, and it's a very simple one. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I already completed it, as you can see here, um, but I'll walk you through it, and you'll get the flags, I guarantee you. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and run an in-map scan. Now, that's the first step you do whenever you're looking uh, to enumerate and find what services are running on that box. In this case, we have port 8080 running, and it's running Apache Tomcat. Right away when I saw Apache Tomcat, there's been other labs I've done in the past, and going through the EJPT course, there was um, a few labs within that that taught me a little bit about Apache Tomcat. But the thing is here, we're not using uh, Metasploit for this. Uh, we're not using any of that, right? We're doing this manually. So how do we do this manually? Let me walk you through that process because it's important to know. All right. So now that we know that this uh, IP address has a service running on port 8080, we can go ahead and take a look at that. So when you do take a look at that, you'll see something like this. Now, when I had seen this, right away I'm thinking there's directories here and there's a, mainly be a vulnerable directory I should be looking at. So right after you do that, let me go ahead and pull up my next command here. You're gonna go ahead and run GoBuster, like I run, I'm running here on the IP address, so you can enumerate the directories. Now you can see this did a pretty good job in finding all the subdirectories of the site, docs, examples, manager. Now, unfortunately, you do have to go through these manually. There's automated methods that Ipsec shows on his videos. Um, and just to save time, we won't go through those, but just know that in this case, we only had a few directories that were really of interest, docs, example, and manager, right? So what we can do is simply put those into our browser and when we go to manager, that one's very interesting because it will take you here um, to Tomcat Application Manager. Now the Tomcat Application Manager, let me go and go back to it and see if it asks me for a password. I don't believe it, I don't remember that it did, but it's possible it did. And I didn't get a password prompt. But if you do, the default password for Tomcat is going to be, and it, it's, if you, if you looked at the other directories, there's a few other ones here listed. Let me take a look. Um, there's one for examples and docs. So I believe it's docs. It might be examples. Let's take a look at it real quick. So yeah, this is definitely something you're going to want to do whenever you're actually doing one of these is to go through every single one of these directories and then see what you can find. So here's looks like it takes us. Here, I think we can click on Manage Apps, and then you can see this one here as well. I'll take you straight there. Uh, server status, all uh, right. Host manager, host manager, okay. So this says that the username is Tomcat, and the password is secret, and that's kind of like the default one, right? But uh, in this case, it didn't ask us to authenticate, so we're pretty much good there. All right, so what's next? So we're in the portal now, and we know that Tomcat's vulnerable, and we're just looking to see if we can upload anything, specifically a payload. We can see we can upload a WAR, RAR file to deploy. A WAR file, actually. WAR. <laughs> RAR. Anyways, uh, so you can upload it here, and what does this mean? Well, let's see if, if there's a payload that we can use. So I simply Googled WAR payloads. And when I Googled that, I actually was able to find a website that shows you how to upload a um, MSF Venom payload. And as I was reading through this, I thought, man, this is, um, this is very interesting. This is almost like they're running me through the lab. And I'm not using uh, MSF Venom. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using MSF Venom. I'm not using Metasploit. So, or an interpreter, and this is more of the manual method. So what we do here is we, we copy their command, right? And we adjust it, so it's our IP address. And if we wanna use that port, we can. And so that's exactly what I did. So the next thing I did was I just 
um, went ahead and, and by the way, whenever you do a directory search, I recommend doing GoBuster and you could just have GoBuster running. And then alternatively, you can have Derb running as well. So have those two running at the same time. Okay. All right. I'll help you ensure that if one doesn't catch directories, the other one might. So I, I copied the commands here. And when I copy the commands and made the payload, all right? And then I checked my um, IP address here so I can adjust um, the L host if necessary. And so you can see I put my L host for ton zero. All right, so my payload's created, it's in my home directory. Now what it, what's the next step? Well, if we look here, it's telling us that we can log in. So this is the default credentials that I was mentioning, but in, in our case, it doesn't ask for it. But if it did, that's what we would put in, all right? Next, um, we'll go ahead and upload, like I mentioned earlier. Start your Netcat listener. So let's let's take a look here. So I have my Netcat listener running. And you can see my Netcat listener is running on port 432, right? It's Netcat-LVNP4321, 4321. All right, so now that we have Netcat running, um, and let's, let's, let me show you how to upload your payload. So you go to choose file and I have my pwn.war. And so that's the file I'm gonna upload, right? So I'm just gonna scroll up here. All right, and I click select. And you can see I already have a have one of those files, but what I can do is I can click deploy because I've chosen my file. So click deploy. And when I, when I do that, uh, in this case, it's, it looks like it's giving me an access denied, probably because I already have um, one of those uploaded. So I already have a uh, war file uploaded. But for you, you shouldn't get that, right? You should be able to, um, to, to access it. So we'll go back here to the application manager. So once you've uploaded it, the next step here, and you, so you've, you've uploaded it, you deployed it, is to click here on the um, pwn hyperlink, right? So it's starting this directory. This directory is now available, so you can actually uh, go to it, but it's better to just click it here because that will initiate the remote connection, uh, the reverse shell connection back to your listener. And you can see that that worked for me. Uh, as soon as I got in, I, I typed who am I, and I got NT authority system. So NT authority system, I have um, privilege access there, and I've already escalated my privileges. Very cool. So what's next? Um, let's go ahead and find the flags. So if you uh, go ahead and change directory into the users, you can see I threw in a few Linux commands, not not okay. You know, you're trying to use the Windows commands because you're on Windows. All right, so you type dir, and you can see it has its flags. And I thought this flags was an actual flag, but it's a, it's a folder. So if you um, you know dig into the folder, you'll see that there's um, that's a folder, and when you go inside of it, dir, you'll see that there's a two for the price of one text. So that was interesting. I typed cat because again, I thought I was in Linux, but I remembered. Okay, hey, I'm in Windows. So type. You got to type the word type, and two for one in quotations. And you can see that you have both flags here for the user and the root, all right? So you successfully um, gained all the information that you needed so that you can go ahead and complete this. And at the same time, I showed you my methodology on how you go through this. Now, um, if you ran into any issues along the way, I uh, will go ahead and just provide a link um, or actually not provide a link. I will input the commands in the comment section, right? So you can take a look at the comment section and you'll see the commands that I utilized. Uh, so again, if you're studying for the EJPT, even the OSCP, I've got it on my box list here. Um, highly recommend that you do this one. Uh, you can see I, I like to keep record of the boxes I've completed for the OSCP, their name, the uh, description of it, and then the date I completed it. Also, um, if you have any ISC squared certifications, these will uh, count towards your CPEs for the year. So it's another way of um, gaining more knowledge while at the same time working on your CPEs. Not a bad thing to do. All right, so I've uh, went ahead and showed you how to do this. If you really enjoyed this video, uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe and like button. I really appreciate that. And I hope you like my content. All right. I hope you have a good one. Danny out.